Good afternoon, everybody. Can you believe it's Thursday already? Yes, we're heading into the weekend. But before we do, let's check out our top stories right here on the Israel Brief, brought to you by a lay of the land and hosted by myself, Rolene Marx. So before we take a relaxing weekend, let's look at those stories making major headlines in Israel today. And we begin with a story in New York and New York's governor, the first female governor, Kathy Hochul of the Democratic Party, was addressing the Jewish Communities Relations Alliance and uh, said that she outrightly rejects those members of her party. And I think we all know who she's alluding to, uh, need I say, the squad, who question the Democratic Party's commitment to the state of Israel and the strong bond between the two countries. Addressing the audience, she also said she is committed to increasing security for the Jewish community of New York. The community has been the target of many hate crimes over the last couple of years, one of them turning deadly. And while she was addressing members of her party that may reject Israel, another member of her party, this time a congressman from New York, Jamal Bowman, is here in Israel as part of a delegation. Now, he is a, a more liberal, or what we could call him maybe a social democrat, uh, from the Democratic Party. And uh, he has been quite critical about Israel over the last years. And um, uh, he posted earlier today to his Twitter account that he was in the city of Hebron talking to Palestinian children and all they want is their freedom. Well, this is an opportunity to remind the congressman that Jews only have access to 3% of Hebron because of threats to our security. Also on Twitter, the congressman chose to commemorate Kristallnacht, which is very admirable, except for one glaring omission. He neglected to mention the word Jew or the word anti-Semitic. Well, Mr. Bowman, let us just remind you, it's okay to use words like Jews and anti-Semitism because the only way we can combat anti-Semitism is to acknowledge and recognize the crime that it is. In other news now, we go to the southern tip of Africa and former president of South Africa, F.W. de Klerk, passed away this morning. He was 85 years old. De Klerk was the last white president of South Africa negotiating the peaceful transition from the apartheid government into a new democratic government. De Klerk was the leader to bring the country to referendum that cast that critical vote to end apartheid. He was also the key decision maker in releasing Nelson Mandela from prison on Robben Island. And the two leaders would be joint Nobel Peace laureates uh, accepting the Nobel Prize for Peace. In later years, de Klerk became a strong supporter of the state of Israel and was particularly aggrieved when anybody made the comparison between Israel to that of apartheid South Africa. In fact, the Mandela de Klerk paradigm is one that many people say that would be the perfect solution for the ongoing conflict between Israel and her Palestinian neighbors. And uh, the answer that is often given to that is that it takes two brave leaders to forge peace. Our next story now takes us to Paris and a Parisian court has sentenced to life the murderer of 85-year-old Holocaust survivor Mireille Knoll. Mireille was brutally murdered by Yassine Mihov, a neighbor of hers who she knew for all of his life and often used to host in her home. One day he and his accomplice brutally murdered Knoll and set fire to her body. He was tried for hate crime and of anti-Semitism because it is believed that he specifically targeted Knoll because she was Jewish and he believed it would be lucrative. And our final story of the day, it really is a global Israel brief, takes us to the United Kingdom and Commonwealth countries. Today is Remembrance Day. It is a day where these countries will come to a complete standstill to remember those veterans and those who have served and currently served in the armed forces. I know that many of you watching this 
live in Commonwealth countries, and I grew up in South Africa, where we would often be uh, cognizant of Remembrance or Poppy Day. It is a day that we honour and pay tribute to those who fought in wars such as the First World War, the Second World War, which has particular resonance for many of us. It makes me think of my two late grandfathers who both served in His Majesty's army up north fighting the evil Nazi regime. We think of those who died in service to their countries. We think of those who liberated the Nazi death camp and gave freedom to so many of the struggling survivors. We think of those who continue to serve and those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. We think of those who bear the scars that we can see and those who struggle with the scars that we cannot. We remember that they gave their todays so that we could have our tomorrows. We remember and honour them, lest we forget. Those are your top stories making headlines in Israel, but don't forget to check out our website at www.layoftheland.online. Dave Kaplan's article about Crystal Nacht is up there. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook at Lottel site. Please join our community by giving us a like or a follow and beat those Facebook censors by sharing our content. We are also on YouTube and if you're viewing this now, please do us a favor and click on that red subscribe button. It really helps us get as much news from Israel as we can out to as many people as possible. And of course, we're on Twitter and our handle is at Lay of the Land 5. I'm Rolene Marks and this is the Israel Brief. We wish you all a safe, a healthy weekend. Shabbat Shalom and we'll see you again on Monday.